Hi and welcome to another repaint video. I'm Hannah from Hoodles and this is the process of making a white tea doll. My third demon, Yin Chen. I'm not pronouncing it right, the intonation needs to be corrected, but you know it's the same with the English for the rest of the video, I am working hard on making everyone equally offended. Anyway, this is my favorite of the teammates so far, she turned out better than I thought and the process was a delight. I also took the opportunity to try white tea, which was delicious. White tea is made from the tea plant, but the leaves are not heated after picking it, instead they're just dried. I love how many different teas one can make from the same leaves, just by changing how they're processed. It's an art form in itself. Now that I've gotten the opportunity to be a bit uh, pretentious, uh, let's go, let's start crafting, let's do this. Again, I start with a broken cup. The bottom was in tiny, tiny pieces, which made the sanding a bit of an adventure, but you know, it all went fine. I sand at an angle to make crevices, where gold paint will stick after I glue it together. Then I, well, glue it together, like a 3D puzzle. Then I remove excess glue with acetone and a cotton pad. As I mentioned in Darjeeling, doing it like this makes the cup unusable as a teacup. The adhesive is toxic, the paint is toxic, it's uh, perfect for crafting though. Here I'm carefully filling in the crevices with gold paint, then I use more acetone and a cotton pad to remove the excess paint gently. Then I seal the inside with nail polish to prevent resin from leaking, and uh, here it is, Kintsugi done. Now I can start on the doll, I first cut off the legs, and then try to fix the neck. It broke when removing the head, destroying the neck peg, so she needed a replacement. Abby Abominable volunteered. I took it off and put it on Gina Fires. Then I super glued the sides using a bar clamp to force the pieces together while drying. I had never tried this out before, but it worked out really well. The neck has a little white line, but I'll cover that with lace later on. With the body finished, I removed the paint from the head with more acetone, then I did some base painting with my airbrush. Some white for the eyes and pink blush. This way my pencil's color won't mix with the gold of her skin tone, plus the blush will look brighter. After a coat of MSC, I start on the face up. The same thing as usual, trying to make things even and symmetrical and failing at it, but saving it at the end and being satisfied with the result. I've dropped a big chunk of my perfectionism and uh, I just enjoy this. Ooh, I cut a regular eraser and used the corners to erase tiny spots, no need for fancy tools. Here I'm adding a more saturated pink close to her eyes, then I smooth it all with a q-tip, then some more work on creating depth, and I'm trying to make the iris more purple. I decided on lavender because it really complemented all the white and the gold skin tones. Next I work a lot on white highlighting, making eye creases above her eyes. Then she got some fluffy eyebrows, also white, here I'm working on defining strands with my silver watercolor pencil. It's a bunch of building colors, so I skipped a lot of the process, so as not to bore you. I just had to. More pastels in the iris than some MSC and she's ready for the acrylics. First I wanted to give her fluffy white eyelashes and I think I managed, then I painted some eye shines, enhanced some highlights and uh, defined the eyebrows. She also got some freckles with diluted white paint. I paint the kintsugi to match the cup using colira paint with some liquidex varnish, then I gloss the lips and eyes with tamiya gloss varnish. You'll see how the iris becomes so much more, you know, there. Some shine on the nose and it's finished. Next is horns. I wanted to give her some buck horns, make her, you know, less of a demon and more of a spirit, but she's still a part of the gang. Got me a spare scrap head to use as a base, stuck the wires inside and used my glue gun to create a solid base. Next I mix epoxy clay and I sculpt. It's odd editing this part because I remember exactly what was going on in my audiobook and this was like over a month ago. Memory is really a strange thing. After curing for 24 hours I take them off and sand them a bit. This makes the paint stick better and smoothens the rough edges. First I painted a base coat of regular white paint, then I added a bit of brown to make it more off-white, carefully removing excess with a cotton pad. Then I mixed some bad sparkle dust makeup stuff with some gloss varnish, it didn't turn out that sparkly though. Well, anyway, finally I added gold flakes at the base. And there we go, for once, they actually turned out as I imagined, which is cool. Before proceeding I paint the scalp white with my The Armor Painter acrylics. While that dries, let's make some clothes. I thought wedding dress vibes and uh, use the top part of Moonlight Jewel's Lolita dress pattern. Without some parts. I, I, I only used the bodice and sleeves. Anyway, the sleeves are made from lace. I cut it the width I wanted it, then trimmed the top part according to the pattern. Then I glued it on the body with super glue, glued the edges to prevent it from fraying, and then I left it to its own demise. 
to dry. I mean, I, I left it to dry. Then I had sewn them together using a straw from when I always stole an extra straw from McDonald's. What can I say? I'm a crafter, which makes me a low-key hoarder. I glue the rest of the sleeve onto the body and then move on to the bodice. I used the Lolita dress pattern and traced it on white fall leather, then I cut it out, removing the seam allowance since I'm gluing everything. I had this tiny delicate lace that I ruffled and glued to the inside of the bodice. If I'd pinned it, I would have ended up with small holes in the fabric, so I fabric glue and paper clipped it. Then I sewed along the edges. I wanted to make something soft and flowing on the top, so I gathered and glued this white fabric. Honestly, I might never go back to making detachable clothes after this, craft glue and masking tape all the way. This fabric frays easily, so I glued the edges and left it to dry completely, then I did the same with the layer of the skirt. Again, gather, glue and leave to dry. While that dries, I gather the top and sew it around the neck. Gather, glue and leave to dry. That's my slogan for my teammates. I glued some more of the same ruffled lace on the headdress as on the bodice and added a ribbon to it. While that dries, I made the second layer of the skirt. Again, gather glue and leave to dry. Finally, I can take off the masking tape and super glue the bodice into place. I trimmed the back since I didn't need the extra velcro space, then started adding stuff. Here I added a ribbon that I tied in the back, then I glued a piece of ribbon on the choker, adding some chains and a piece of an old earring. I then added some purple flat back beads, this was a questionable decision, but it looked cool when she finally got her resin tea. Tiny hidden details you don't see in pictures, I, I kinda like them. Finally I reattached the head by making three incisions inside the neck. The blue flowers on the cup and saucer would have worked, I guess, but she'd look odd, the only one without 3D flowers. So I made hers, as usual, out of paper clay. I have a love-hate relationship with this clay because it's rather forgiving and easy to work with, but it leaves my hands dry like the desert. And I'm not too fond of that, you know, sound feeling you get when you have dry hands. After drying the flowers, I use my airbrush, first in purple and then adding more white, painting them from above, then I add blobs of glue and nail art caviar beads. I just remember that I need to add gold flakes before adding the flowers, so I did this backward, some liquid gloss varnish and gold flakes later, I had fixed it. Ugh, this is so cute. I added some flower petals, what do you call this color? Beige? Yellow? Orange? They all feel wrong. Finally I glossed it all with more gloss varnish and it was finished. I smooshed a chunk of paper clay to raise the doll from the bottom, let that dry and then hot glue it all together. It needed some adjustments, so I remelted the glue with my embossing tool. It worked really well. I should have done the resin before the hair and horns, but do you know what? This is fine. I carved out holes and stuck toothpicks to mark out where the horns will go, then I hot glued the hair. This is not her finest moment. The embossing tool helps. It's like a soft version of a heat gun. Finally I glue the horns where they're supposed to be. It was tricky getting it right, they could be more perfectly symmetrical. Finally I pulled strands on the horns, heating them into place so they fell nicely. I added some broken sequins and pieces of leaves making her headdress look like scales. Unfortunately my hand was in the way of filming it all, so I I'm sorry for the lack of video. I also added a piece of an earring to her forehead, taping it in place while drying. Then I glued pieces of the same lace as her sleeves, plus more lace. This wasn't necessary, but why not add a veil? And then she was finished. It's tea time, and this is by far my favorite resin, not much left, and I couldn't find the same one, so I had to buy a different brand, and I hope it will be okay. I mix the parts one to one by weight, add the tiniest amount of brown and stir it, sort of carefully. I had to add some yellow too and mix some more, then I pour it into the cup. After poking the skirt underneath, I realized I had mixed too little resin, so I actually put some rocks in it. They won't float in the resin and won't show underneath the skirt. Tea label and butterflies left. This label is made from paper I dyed with coffee. Oh, the irony. I still need to improve scorching the edges, by the way. It always starts burning. Any tips and tricks are appreciated quite cute. Finally, the butterflies. I dust the mold with some off-white eyeshadow, then fill them with UV resin and cure it under a UV lamp. 
After the molding, I was underwhelmed with the result. I painted the bodies and added a bunch of gold flakes. I first painted some Liquitex gloss varnish and then add gold flakes on the underside because I thought it would be cool. I'm not sure about the result though, so I added some watered down white acrylic paint to enhance the grooves and I guess it looked better. They look soft at least and I like that. Then I glue them, one on the saucer, one on the headdress and finally the smallest one on one of the horns. So that was it, white tea is finished. I've never tried Yin Chen because it's mad expensive, but uh, one of these days I might try it. Next in the series is rooibos, so there is a lot of red, but first I'm making the weirdest thing I've ever created, which is uh, saying a, a lot. <laughs> it's on par with my voodoo doll with removable internal organs. My colleague used that one as an example of my creativity and said that if she didn't know me, she'd wonder if I was insane or dangerous. It wasn't offensive at all, no emotional damage, what's insanity for one is logic to another, and my dolls can give people the creeps, but they're not hurting anyone. So heads up, Halloween is coming a bit late, but it, it's on its way. So this is what I started with, and this is the result. She looks like a fairy, not a demon, but it's fine. How did she get her horns out of that cup? I have no idea. She had to tilt her head somehow. Anyway, I love her and I'm proud. Favorite part? Definitely her dress. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an awesome day. Until next time. Bye!